Well, we'd like to welcome you to Salem First Assembly today's service, and today is a very special day. It's a special day because it's Mother's Day. And it's very special to me because one week ago, well, my mom went to be with the Lord. And today I'm going to give a Mother's Day because I seem like after reflecting on my mom and all that she has done for me, and well, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I have a good story of a, of a good mom, a loving mom that made a difference. And today we're going to talk about a loving mom. We're going to talk about a mom that made a difference. You know, sometimes many moms don't always think they've done a good job. But the reality is every mom and every dad needs to depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ for help. And when we do, he equips us, he ignites us, he instructs us. And he does the work within us to become the best mom and the best dad. So for all you moms out there today, let me tell you, you are special. You are unique and there is none like you. And I pray this Sunday, this Mother's Day Sunday, that you would be blessed by the service, by the worship. And I pray that you would enjoy today in such a way that it would do something in you, through you, and around you. So let's take a moment. Let's worship the Lord And let's see what God's going to do in each of you today, and especially to you moms. Happy Mother's Day. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. We are so thankful for all of you, and we appreciate all that you do. Well, everybody else, we're ready to worship this morning. So if you're ready, let's just give him praise, and let's sing. Come on.
your name is great, Lord. And we declare that holy is the Lord. We are so thankful. Oh, come on, sing holy. Holy is the Lord. The whole earth sings. The whole earth sings. And holy is the Lord. The whole earth sings. The whole earth sings. And God is great. His praise fills the earth, fills the heavens, and your name will be praised through all the world. And God is great, sing His praise, all the earth and all the heavens, cause we're living for the glory of your name. And cause we're living for the glory of your name. Glory of your name. Yes, Lord, we're here to, to put you first, Lord. Lord, we're here to build our, to build your kingdom, Lord, not ours, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to realize, Lord, that nothing in this world matters as much as you, Lord. And nothing but your plans are higher than ours. And that your ways are higher than ours, Lord. And that your timing is more perfect than ours, Lord. Lord. We know that we don't know what tomorrow will hold, Lord. But help, help us to remember who holds our tomorrow, Lord. That it's in that mighty name of Jesus that we have power, that we have protection, that we have peace, that we have strength. Lord, help us to, to never forget what all you've done for us, Lord. To know that you hold all in your presence. We are so thankful for Lord for all you've done, Lord. We are thankful for all the mothers this morning, for all the sacrifice that they've given, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for everyone that you just give them peace in this time, Lord. If they have anything upon their heart, Lord, that they can just call to you and say, Lord, I need you, Lord. Because we can do nothing without the Lord our God. And there is no one, no one higher than you, Lord. No other name that is greater than you, Lord. Lord. Just help us to remember all you've done and to continue to trust you throughout all our days. We are so thankful, Lord, for all you do. And worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Love to those of 
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in It's when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning And I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire My dad left and dead beneath the water And I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and the strength of me And either way I will bow to the things of the world Cause I know, and I know I will never be Send me 
in the darkness as the darkness bows to him I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prince in walls gave in and nothing stands between us nothing stands between remember, Lord, that you always with us no matter what we're going through. We are so thankful, Lord, for how you're always here to take care of us. For when we do our best, Lord, we know you will truly do the rest. Lord, I just want to pray for today, Lord, for all your people. Lord, I pray that you just bless their lives, Lord. Help them to put anything that they have upon their heart, Lord, and anything that comes in their path, Lord, right to you, Lord. Because you are the way maker. Lord, you are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. You are truly the light in the darkness, Lord. Lord, we, we try to find something else in this world that could fill us, Lord. But there is nothing, Lord, that can give us the peace, Lord. That can give us the help, Lord, in all things, Lord. Thank you for all you do, Lord. I pray that you just bless the rest of this service, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Bless all the mothers out there, Lord, for all they've done, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we just declare this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you, Tim, for the worship. We so appreciate all of you. And on the screen, you'll see all the ways that you can contact Salem First Assembly. So go to Facebook and like us so we can be in touch with you or a YouTube podcast. All of those ways that we have is to be able to build a relationship with you simply because we want to know you personally. Today's message is a special message as I opened up today because it's about a godly mother named Jochebed. And today is a special day, as I said before, is because this is the first Mother's Day service that my mom is with the Lord. Just a week has passed. And it's amazing how times fly. You know, when you think about Mother's Day, there's something special about a mom. And there's something special about a dad. And when they both come together, God has given all that is needed for people to be able to uh, grow and become everything God's created them. You know, a teacher had a class, and she was given a lesson on magnets. And she said all of the magnet was designed and what it did. And 
The next day on the test, she gave like a pop quiz, and she simply said this. I'm six letters, and the first letter is M, and I pick up things. When the teacher got the test in, 50% of the class said that the six-letter word that begins with an M that picks up things was their mother. And isn't that true, that you moms, well, you pick up a lot after us, don't you? You see, there's something special about a mother. You know, a little boy forgot his lines on Sunday school preparation, and um, his mother was in the front row and trying to help him out, help him to remember his lines, but her son went blank. Finally, she leaned towards and whispered with the clue and said, I am the light of the world. The little child beamed with light, became very bold and yelled, my mother is the light of the world. You see, there's a relationship that takes place within sons and daughters, with moms and dads. And today is Mother's Day, and we're going to reflect upon you moms today. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, no one is poor who has a godly mother. He went on to say, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have followed me and clung to me all the days of my life. And all that I am and hope to be, he said, Abraham Lincoln, I owe it to mom. You see, Mother's Day started many years ago with one woman named Anna M. Javis. She was so attached to her mom, she loved her mom so much, that she decided on May 10th, 1908, Mrs. Javis gave a carnation to those who attended her mother's memorial service. And it started to gain popularity. And it was on May 9th, 1914, by the act of Congress, President Woodrow Woods, Wilson, Wilson excuse me, proclaimed that every second Sunday in May would be Mother's Day. And today, on Mother's Day, we give expressions of love and appreciation for our moms. So today, if you're a mom and you're part of this congregation, yesterday you received the gift from the church. We went to your house, we delivered it, because I believe, we believe, that you are special, mom. I know that sometimes you look in the mirror and you don't feel that way. And I know things are said and you don't feel that way. And you're busy doing the best you can, and sometimes people don't appreciate it. But I'm going to tell you, Mom, I know that God created you with incredible works to do incredible things because the amount of passion and love that God has put into a mom to care for her children is beautiful. And so as we talk about a godly mother named Jochebed, I pray that you understand that God has given you to help your children. You know, the plan of God when he gave parents was to help children to, to help, that we would help them nourish them, to grow them up, to guide them through life. You know, everybody, not everybody has had a good relationship with the mother and father. I recognize that. I live in the same world everybody does. I'm young, maybe, will look at your mom and say, you know, my mom wasn't a good mom. My mom maybe was on drugs. Or my dad was uh, an alcoholic. Or, and everybody has a story. But can I tell you something? It's not what one has done to you. It's really a choice of what you will become to that child that God gives you. You see, there's no excuses. You see, godly mother or not, you have to adopt what you're going to become and the type of mom you're going to become, the type of believer you're going to become, the, the type of man you're going to become. You see, we all are called, whether we have children or not, to be spiritual parents. And I am a firm believer that there are many kids that don't really have what they should have. And for those who are strong in the Lord, for those who love the Lord, I believe you need to step it up and become a spiritual mom, a spiritual grandma, a spiritual dad, a spiritual granddad, and come us alongside and mentor them and love them right where they are so you could become that spiritual parent. To me, it's not the one who can make a child biologically that is the mother or the father. No, we know what it is. It's the one that fulfills the role of a mother or a father. And a spiritual role is probably one of the most important roles you can ever be, ever fulfill. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 
It's really a, a prayer, the Shama prayer that the Israels would, Israelites would pray. But listen to this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Now listen. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. And then it talks about the phylacteries. Tie them as symbols around your hands and bind them on your foreheads and write them on the door frames of your house or your gates. That they're talking about the mezuzah. That is a little thing they have on the doorway or uh, um, the gates. And, and it would have the scriptures, Deuteronomy, in, in the back of it on the mezuzah. And the phylacteries would go around their hand or on their forehead. And it was scripture inside that remind them of what the word of God said. It tells us that we as spiritual leaders, we as spiritual parents, we as biological parents need to teach our kids. And, and all through life, while we're walking, while lying down, getting up, just talking about, we are to teach them not just how to be good citizens, uh, citizens in our world, but more than that, how to have a relationship with God. Ephesians tells us in chapter 6, chapter 6 says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. And it says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. That's mom and dad. Bring your children up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. This is huge. This is huge. So I lay a little foundation, and I want to lay a little bit more now where we're going, because we're going to be talking about Moses' mother, and her name was Jochebed. Now, I want you to understand that the descendants of Jacob, Jacob, are now going into uh, Egypt, and they're about 70. And Joseph, at that time, was second in command. God had placed them there for such a time as this. But when Joseph died, and all his brothers died, and all the generations died, the Israels became fruitful, and they multiplied greatly, and became exceedingly numerous, so that the whole land was filled in Egypt. But there was a new king that rose up, and that new king didn't know much about Joseph at all, and he thought to be threatened by the Hebrews. So the king put slave masters over the Hebrews to oppress them, and they put them into forced labor. But you know what happened? God caused the Hebrews to even multiply even more, even in the midst of the oppression. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and grew. Then the king or Pharaoh, had an idea and said, you know what, midwives, I want you midwives, every time they have a boy, I want you to kill the boy. But if it's a girl, let the girl live. But the midwives really feared God, and they didn't do that. And so God eventually blessed the midwives and gave them families. I want you to understand something, that we're about to go is about the story of Two individuals, Moses' parents, who lived in a very difficult time. But here we see Jochebed, a very godly, a very focused, a, a woman who's a slave, a woman who's in tough situations, and she's living for God, and she has a love for her children. Let's look at Exodus chapter 1, verse 22. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all people. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but every girl may live. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him, coated it with tar and pitch, and she placed a child in it and put him among the reeds among the banks of the Nile. His sister, that was Miriam, stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds, sent her slave girl to get it. 
She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This was the one, this is one of the Hebrews' babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go get one of the Hebrews' women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. This is Moses' mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take the baby, nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I have drew him out of the water. Now, I want you to understand something, that we have this incredible story of Moses. Moses comes out to be a very important person in Scripture. He's the one that gave the law, the Ten uh, Commandments, the Decalogue, in Exodus chapter 20. But not only that, he led the people of Israel out of Egypt. I want you to understand that in Exodus chapter 6, verse 20, we get a little bit more information on Jochebed and the story. We learn the father's name is Aram, Moses' father's name, Aram. And we also learn that Moses' mother is Jochebed, who bore not only Moses, but also Miriam and Aaron. Miriam was the older sister, then came Aaron, and then came Moses. Now, let me just share this with you. First of all, God has given us scriptures how to raise up children. And if we go to the scriptures, he'll help you. You know, when I had my children, they didn't each come with a manual because every child that I have, I have four boys, and each one is very different. And when we were growing up, growing them up, they're all men today, serving the Lord, so proud of each one of them. But each one of them are very different than the other. And they didn't come with a manual for each one. I would have loved that. It would have helped me out so much. However, it did come with a manual, and it's the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth. But in that basic instructions, it actually gives us information how to raise and teach and equip and help children. In Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So I want to talk about Jochebed, Moses' mother. Her name means glory of Jehovah, or Jehovah is her glory. I want you to understand this. The name is kind of ironic. She's a slave. She's under real harsh conditions, um, and her name says Jehovah is her glory. I want you to understand that here she is, a pregnant woman who is a slave, and she happens to be pregnant in the most oppressive time that she ever lived in Egypt. I want you to understand that they were throwing the babies into the Niles, the Nile River, and the Nile was full of crocodiles. And she looked at the child, and she just saw how beautiful he was. But I know every mother thinks their kid's beautiful. I mean, when my mom saw me for the first time, she just said, ha. Huh. <laughs> she probably didn't. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> but every mother thinks their kids are great because it's their child. And something happens where a mother has a baby and as soon as she sees this baby, she already loves the baby while she carries for it. But when she sees that baby, something happens. You see, you have to understand that we have to know that Jochebed had, was, had that instinct to protect her son. She already had a daughter, and she's probably at this time maybe around 10 years old. And then there was Aaron, and Aaron could have been around three or four years old. And I want you to know that Pharaoh was one of the line of lunatics who were trying to get rid of the Jews. And this is what's not uncommon because you understand all through Scripture, you see Satan passionate about exterminating the Jews or the Jewish race, the Jewish people, because the devil always knew that from the Jewish people, God was going to rise up a Messiah that was going to be the Savior of the world. You see, it's funny, but when people, ah, I don't know, when people hate, when people murder, when people persecute other people, it, it's something 
that's not of God. When people of history hated individuals, that was not of God. You see, that's when the flesh comes in. And, and when you look at the church, it doesn't have, in some sections of the church, it doesn't have a great history because of just what took place. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus was really about love. Jesus was about saving the human race. And that's why Jesus came. I want you to understand something, that Satan was always trying to kill the Jewish people because of the promise of the Messiah coming from the Jewish people. You know, you have Pharaoh throwing all of the male children into the Nile. You have Haman in the story in the book of Esther, how he's trying to kill all the Jews. And then you have King Herod once again killing all of the babies two years and under because, once again, Satan's trying to kill the very Messiah. But God was protecting the child, and today we see the whole story. God is with you too, mom and dad and saint of God. He's with you. Now, you know, when you look at Jochebed, the qualities of this mother, which I so love, you see that every mother who loves God will possess these qualities. And I really believe this. If you're a lover of the Lord, you're going to have the qualities of Jochebed. You really are. You may not think so, and you may not think that you're all that in a bag of chips. I think we're our worst critics sometimes. We look at our lives and we say, you know, I'm not as good as this person, and I'm not as good as this person, and you need to stop that and recognize what does the Scripture say about you, and that's what you need to look about. And what does God say that you could become? You see, the first great respect for human life Jochebed had She had a great respect for human life. And I think this is important for a godly mother. You see, Jochebed lived with an overpowering love to preserve and protect the lives of her children in a very difficult day and a difficult time. You see, what a contrast, even with today. Do you know over a million babies a year are killed over abortion or even worse since 19... 73, over 50 million babies have been aborted simply because of convenient. You see, it's not because we're caring for the child. We're really looking self-centered about when we don't think that child should live because I'm not ready to have one. But here's the thing. Almost, almost 3,000 babies a day, even though the, the stats are going down, which is great, but so many children are still aborted. You know, what frustrates me as a pastor is that abortion clinics are still open and they're not essential. You see, when it comes to a baby, that's life. The Bible says in Jeremiah that God knew Jeremiah before he was even born. He saw him grow in the mother's womb. She said, talking about a God. God cares about life. He's a God of life. And a normal instinct of a mom is protection. You know, true story, there was a fire in a barn and there was a chicken and he had all his, the mother chick had all her chi- little chicks with her. And to protect the chicken, she covered, her, covered the chicks with her wings. And she stood there. The mother chicken died. But when they got to the chicken, all of the little chicks were alive because of the mother's protection of those little chicks. I, I want you to understand something. That Jochebed had this great respect for human life, and she just wasn't going to give up. You see, Pharaoh's daughter raised Moses as her own. But I want you to understand the second thing that we can learn. Great respect for spiritual life comes from godly mothers. You know, to understand that you have not only a physical life, but you also have a relationship with God And if you work on your relationship with God, it's going to transfer to your children. It's going to transfer everything you do. You see, I know that in Pharaoh's house, Moses was given great education. He was given wealth, grandeur, the whole thing from the ancient Egypt. And yet Moses in Scripture says he refused to be associated with all that came in being a prince of Egypt. And he identified with being a Hebrew. I want you to understand something. This is interesting because Jochebed only had Moses for a short time. 
when she weaned him, and they don't know if that's around three years old, four years old, but she had some time with Moses. And I'm sure that the love of this woman and what she taught and how she inspired and whatever she did and how God used it made a difference when Moses got older. You see, Jochebed only had a few years but those years was years of influence. And do you know something? The greatest years of a child's development is when they're young. You say, ah, they're, too, they're really young. Those are great years of development. You know, Paul the Apostle in 2 Timothy says this about Timothy. He, he wrote to Timothy these words, I, have reminded, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunuch, Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give you the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. I'm going to tell you something. Even Timothy was impacted by his mother, and his grandmother. And can I tell you something, you grandmothers out there? Let me tell you something. I have seen grandchildren listen to their grandmothers. Grandmothers, you're special. I know we've already grown up our kids, but we've learned a little bit too. You know, one of the things as a dad that I've learned, or now as a granddad that I've learned, you know, I like things in order. I like things in order. I like clean rooms. Always told my kids to have a clean room. But you know what I've learned? That sometimes you can clean it, but it's okay to make a mess and just enjoy a moment and not worry about a mess. Sometimes we worry about the mess and we, we really miss the moment. You see, there's plenty of time to clean up, but sometimes the moment you never get again. And so as we learn... We can impact our children and our grandchildren and those children that are around us. And when we do, we can can become those spiritual fathers, grandfathers, mothers, and grandmothers. Just like Timothy was affected um, by those near him. Number three, you know, Jochebed was sacrificial. And I have seen this in my own mom being very sacrificial with all her children caring for them and watching out for them and seeing if they have any needs. Uh, this is what a mom does. Mom, some, and I've seen this many times where, where, where a mom will not buy her shoes, but to make sure that her kids has shoes. You see, I see jo- Jochebed being that sacrificial mom. You know, she gave all she had and did all she could do. She was willing to give her son up to someone else to raise him so that he could have life. I want you to get this. A lot of times people say, well, I can't, I can't do this kid, uh, you know, and they have an abortion. Can I just tell you, that's what they have adoption for. There are so many people out there who just want to love a child and give them a good life. What a great way of living to know that you gave your life, you gave that best thing, a sacrificial, you gave that child to someone else to raise up and give them a life. True story, a dad gave, dad and, a, and a, um, a girlfriend gave up a child because they couldn't do it, and they recognized it, so they gave up the child. And when he was older, he found himself in a hospital, and there was one particular doctor who could do a particular surgery, and that doctor was at that hospital. That doctor saved that man's life. And after a duration of time, they found out that was the very child that they gave up for adoption. That very child saved the father's life many years down the road. I want to tell you something. Live our life sacrificially and don't think about yourself. When we live a sacrificial life, we're esteeming others higher than ourselves. That's what Jochebed did. I, I want you to understand this. This is a great little story. Is um, One day, a teacher was giving a math lesson to one of his students. He was having problems with fractions, and so he said, okay, to the child, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a pie, and how many people are in your house? And the child said, well, I have five brothers and sisters and mom and dad. So he said, you've got seven. He said, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this pie up in seven pieces. Then he said to the child, Okay, in fractions, what fraction 
of the piece of pie are you going to get? The little boy thought for a minute and said, ah, I'm going to get one-sixth of the pie. And, and the teacher said, no, you, have, you don't know your fractions. If there's seven people, what is it going to be? The little boy said, yeah, but you don't know my mom. My mom's going to know how much of a bigger piece I'm going to want, and she's, she's going to deny herself and say, I don't want any pie just so I can get a bigger piece. You see, that's what moms do. They're sacrificial, and that's what Jochebed was. Jochebed was doing it all so that Moses may live. And the number fourth thing I want you to understand a little bit about Jochebed, the qualities of Jochebed and a godly mother, is that she was protective you see, while everyone bowed to this new order, there was a woman, a mother out there named Jochebed who wouldn't give up. She was not going to lay down and give up and allow Pharaoh to destroy her child. And in some sense, she was saying, hey, Pharaoh, no way, Jose, are you going to put your hands on my child? I'm going to give them unto God. We're going to see what God's going to do. See, she was willing to do whatever she needed to do. Three months, three months, she took this child and hid him. I don't know about you, but hiding a child in the beginning while they sleep a little bit, maybe. Once that child gets a little bit older, they tend to cry. They tend to make noise. I could imagine that she didn't sleep very much. I want to tell you something. She was protective. A normal characteristic of a godly mom is she's going to be protective over her child. You know, I've seen a lot of mama bears. You know, you ever look mama bears out there when you touch their child? Boy, I'll tell you what, you can always see what, mother, what kid belongs to a mother because mama bear shows up and shows off. I'll tell you something. There's something that God put in moms to protect. That's a beautiful thing. One of the characteristics that I love about Jochebed and even a godly mother, was that she was courageous. Number five, courageous. Hebrews 11.23, the writer says this, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child. But check this out. goes on to say, And they were not afraid of the king's edict. Did you get that? I mean, you're messing around with your life when you're messing around against the word of a king. You see, that Moses' parents made it into the faith chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. And chapter 11 is all the individuals who did great works and had great faith. And do you know Moses' parents made it in there? Because of this one little phrase, they were not afraid of the king's edict. I want you to understand, they were courageous. You see, Jochebed was courageous to save not only, her na- not only her son, but by doing what she did, she saved the nation, a nation. God used Moses to deliver Israel out of Egypt. I want you to understand, only heaven is going to see the greatness of this woman. She had a part in a big plan. She was willing to trust God in a very hard situation. She was determined in her heart to stand firm against the forces of evil at that time, forces that wanted to destroy her son. She was courageous. Number six, she was creative. I want you to understand something, that she made a basket, she covered it with pitch and tar, and then she said, you know what? I'm I'm gonna float them down the Nile. I'm gonna put them in the hands of God. She had to figure out, how am I going to do this? How am I going to save my child? See, and sometimes moms are so creative. They they think of different ways, and I've seen my own mom being creative. And I know there's many out, out there that you have been so creative. That's a gift from God that God has given unto you. You know the one I really like? I love this seventh one. The seventh one is that Jochebed was a woman of faith, And she trusts God. You see, think about this. She had to put Moses in that creative basket that she did and then close the cover. And no doubt she's been praying for her child that God would protect him and use him. But then she had to close the cover and she had to, now watch this, watch this faith. She had to let go the very thing she loved the most. She had to trust God with her son in that basket as it went down the Nile. Can you get that? 
she had to let God take over, let go of her son and trust God that he was going to find a home for him, watch over him. I mean, think about it. The Nile was full of crocodiles. And it's a river that was supposed to kill Moses. And yet God uses that very river to bring him into a place where God delivers Moses. It's that same river. Down the line, Moses is going to turn into blood to show the power of God. It first happened with God protecting Moses as he's in a basket. The Nile became his deliverance as Pharaoh's daughter saw him. In Hebrews eleven twenty three, 23, we see the hall of faith, the faith chapter of these two individuals that were willing to stand up, stand out. Mom, can I tell you, thank you for who you are. And I want to just say that don't be so rough on yourself because every mom is struggling to be the best mom. I know for me, every dad trying to be the best dad, and we all make mistakes, but we can learn from them, and that's the most important. You see, when you look at the life of Jochebed, you see that she had a trial of her faith, but you understood the foundation of her faith. She exercised her faith. And then she gave a response to her faith. She actually walked it out. To you moms today, I want to say you have faith in God. And the best thing you can ever do for your children is walk in a faith yourself. If you want to give something, you have to receive something. That faith has to be in you before you can give it. You got to receive it before you can give it. And the best thing you can do, mom, is first exhibit that love for God. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then God's going to give you the ability to do some incredible things as you love your children and train them. But let me also tell you don't look at the obstacles that you seem that you face. Now, you know, maybe you have a child that's wayward and, and gone astray. God is in it. Just trust him as Moses' mother had to put Moses in the basket and let, her, let him go down the Nile. You have to do the same thing with your children. I, I, I think of Hannah when she gave her firstborn, Samuel, to the Lord. She gave him to the Lord after he was weaned. She dedicated. She was barren, didn't have no children. God blessed her with a child. She took that child and dedicated him to the Lord. Moms, dads, the greatest thing you can do is dedicate your children to the Lord. I personally love the dedication of a child because it is when you allow God and believe God that God's going to do the supernatural work within them beyond your ability because God can. That's when you say, God, I may not be able to, but you can. And you dedicate, you surrender them to the Lord because God actually loved them even more than you do. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. So when you're facing the obstacles, remember, those are the things you see when you get your eyes off of Jesus. Know that your God's going to show up, and he's going to show off. You have to trust God with your treasures. I'm going to say it again. you got to trust God with your treasures. And when you trust him with your treasures, God's going to help you to see all that he wants to do, and you're going to triumph and have a testimony of God's goodness. I want to just end this message today and just encourage you, Mom. You know, this is the first time doing a Mother's Day, and my mom now is in heaven. It's only been a week, and I miss her so. You know, but I'm reminded, I'm reminded that we need to encourage one another. Encourage one another to do the work, and I want to encourage you, Mom, Today on this beautiful Mother's Day, that you're precious, that you're unique, and God created you special. I, I want you to understand that the Bible tells us that in John 8, 31, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Indeed, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Focus on God's truth. Focus on his word, and he's going to give you the wisdom you need 
to be able to be the best mom he's called you to be. Don't focus on the mistakes. Focus on the, the greatness of God. Because even in the mess, God does the miraculous. He works it out. He does the work. All you need to do is to love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. You do your best, and God's going to do the rest. I don't know where you are, Mom, Dad, uh, any of you who are watching this service, but I want you to know something, that there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You see, the cross was the very way that God became sin for us so that he could forgive the world. Now listen, if you want heaven in your home, it only happens one way. And if you hear my voice, you're accountable for what you hear. Jesus is the only way. That's what God says. That's what his word says. You must be born again, John 3, 3. And it just simply comes down to it. It's not even difficult. You ask God to forgive you of your sins. Everybody sinned. You've sinned, I've sinned. And you say, God, I messed up. I've done it my way. I've been selfish. I've been thinking about me. Forgive me of my sin. And I believe that you came to earth to die for me and to forgive me. And today I want to make you my Savior, my Lord, my God. It's that simple. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. When you make Jesus and surrender your life to him and you ask him to forgive you and you make him Lord of your life, he's going to change your life from the inside out. You know why? Because God does the supernatural. God is in the transformational work and he loves you so much. And that's how you become a born again Christian is putting Jesus Christ at the center of your life. And remember, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God works all things together for his good, for them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. If you let God work it out, He's going to do a work in you and through you and around you. Do me a favor. Can you share this message? Can you share this with a mom? Just share it. Share it, share it. So you may encourage someone because, see, everybody needs to be encouraged. We can learn a lot from Jochebed. She was a godly mother, and she did some things, those characteristics, and all of those characteristics are possible when you lean on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I close by reminding you that God is with you and the great things are yet to come. Trust him. Mom, have a blessed, blessed Mother's Day. You are loved. You are special. And the Bible says there is no none like you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. So remember, until next time, till next Sunday, we're living here to make a difference there. Be blessed and share the greatest message of the gospel. Jesus so loves you. God bless you. Well, thank you for joining us today. You know we believe and trust that God is going to continue to do a work in all of our lives and in his church, despite our current circumstances. For nothing's impossible for God. If you would like to help support the ministry of First Assembly, you can do so by mailing to 430 Route 45, Salem, New Jersey, 08079, or by visiting our website at salemfirstag.org. We hope that you join us for service next Sunday at 1030 a.m. on Facebook.com or YouTube. And you can also check out our podcast every Tuesday on Podbean. We pray that you have a blessed week. And let's continue to remember that life is living in faith every day.